Hello and welcome to this Science Vision video. Now in this video we're going to look at leaf adaptations. Now in previous videos I've described um, photosynthesis, I've talked about um, factors affecting photosynthesis and in this video we're going to look at how a leaf is adapted. So here is our, our leaf, okay? Nice leaf here. Now, what are the features of a leaf? A leaf is broad, it's thin, it's flat and it has internal air spaces. So these are key features. And another really, really important one is it's got a very large surface area. Imagine all the all the leaves on a tree. Imagine you could, you could measure their area, and you find they've got a massive surface area over which photosynthesis can occur. We look in a little detail now at the surface. What we'll find is you get these little perforations here. Now this is not quite right. In here we're showing the upper surface of the leaf. In fact, most stomata are found on the undersurface. Okay, just remember that please. So stomata, which are these little holes here, and singular is stoma. Okay, so stomata is plural, stoma is one. On the undersurface of leaves, okay, allow carbon dioxide to diffuse in and oxygen to diffuse out. So through these little holes here on the underside of leaves, carbon dioxide diffuses in and oxygen diffuses out. We also lose water through these tomatoes as well by a process called transpiration. Okay? So this is another adaptation of the leaf. If we look now at a leaf in cross section, imagine your leaf and you've cut through it to a cross section through the leaf. This is the upper surface, this is the lower surface. Okay? Now let's see what we've got. First of all, on the most, the most, on the <laughs> sorry, the top of the leaf here, you've got a waxy cuticle. Now this stops too much water from evaporating away from the leaf. Imagine all day long, the sun is shining on the upper surface here, and there's a tendency for water to be lost by evaporation. Well, this waxy cuticle, in effect, protects the leaf from water loss. Now, plants in hot, dry, or windy conditions, as you'd expect, are prone to more water loss. Therefore, they've got a thicker wax layer, and some plants go even further than that with their adaptations. Just beneath the waxy layer and beneath the upper epidermis, you've got what's called the palisade layer. Now, most of the chloroplasts are found in this layer here. Now, chloroplasts, as you know, contain chlorophyll, and this is the pigment we need, or the plant needs, for photosynthesis. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, if the light is hitting the top surface here, it makes sense to pack your chlorophyll in these layers here where most sunlight is. So this is a palisade layer. Now less light is going to get through to this layer here, and we call this the spongy mesophyll layer. Now the spongy mesophyll layer has less chloroplasts because less light gets through. What it does have though are these air spaces. Can you see all these air spaces, a large number of air spaces. That's really important because beneath that you've got the lower epidermis and also here you've got, can you see there, this here is a stoma. Okay, note the presence here of stomata, singular stoma, and these are tiny little holes or pores and they've got guard cells, there's a guard cell and a guard cell, and they let gases in and out and also water movement as well. Okay, so that's really, really important. So, cross section of the leaf, waxy cuticle, palisade, spongy mesophyll, this is called the lower epidermis, and down here you've got the stoma, allows gases, CO2 in, oxygen out, and also allows water out as well. Okay, so those are the basic leaf adaptations. Thanks for watching my revision video. To see further examples of free science revision videos, visit my site please at www.sciencerevisionvideo.com. Okay, thank you for watching.